Hello, my name is Neil Mullinger. I'm the Product Manager for Verification IP here at Synopsys. And I'm here with Bernie DeLay again, who's our Director of R&D. And today's subject is the Protocol Debug Challenge. Today's verification IPs contain a slew of checks that sit there and, and verify the protocol and throw out any protocol errors that they may find. And as you may have seen in a previous talk, uh, they also include test suites, which thoroughly exercise the protocol at the interface. So what happens when you find a problem? Finding the source of that problem can be a huge challenge, especially with today's very complex multi-layered protocols. It requires a, a lot of expertise and a tremendous amount of sifting through log files and waveforms and uh, other information to try and find out what the source of the problem is. So today, Bernie is going to talk how we've simplified that problem with protocol aware debug. Great, thanks, Neil. Okay, as Neil said, you know the traditional approach to verifying, uh, you know, and finding out what the root cause of a bug in your in your overall test is, is to to do log files and waveforms. So while we were back developing our USB VIP, and the guy doing the LTSSM actually was taking that same approach. He looked at signals in, in your wave viewer. He looked at log files, added new messages, and tried to, tried to figure out what was going on. He eventually got frustrated with that, to be quite honest, and he developed an initial prototype of what we today call the protocol analyzer. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now that prototype has evolved into a full-fledged product. So basically what you see here is the protocol analyzer view. In essence, what you have is a visualization of what is happening in the protocol. If you take a protocol like USB again, which I've used a few times mm -hmm. already, you have layers, you have packets, you have transactions, you have transfers. All those types of objects have a relationship. Okay. In the case of USB, what you see here is a transaction window okay, that lets you visualize the transaction activity happening on the bus, not from a signal level, but more from a protocol perspective of what's going on. Time goes from zero to the end of the simulation at the bottom of it, so we have a vertical display instead of a horizontal display. But what you find in those displays is, in this case, transfers, transactions, and packets are all shown here in these various colors. So this is actually representing the start and end of a particular, in this case, a transfer or a transaction on the bus, okay? So since these protocols are, are stacked, there's a relationship associated with each one of these. So if you want to see what's happening in this particular transfer and what transactions and packets that it actually generated, you'd simply want to know the parent-child relationship. So you'd click on this, do a little right click on your mouse out there, okay, and say choose successors. Okay, it would then show all the transactions and packets associated with that transfer. So now I understand the relationship of what's going on. Okay, that's key information if you're really thinking about it from a protocol perspective. I don't have to look at log files and try to relate these things together with IDs or anything like that. Much better visualized like that. Okay? In addition, maybe on that particular transfer, you want to know what are the values at that time. So if you click on it again in this right hand side, it's going to actually show you all the values for that particular class along with the start and end time. Okay? So now I have an understanding of the relationships within the protocol and the actual values within that protocol too. Okay? The next thing you may have is, okay, I've got a UVM test bench. And I do have a simulation log file out there with messages, error messages, unfortunately, maybe in this particular case since I'm doing debug. So what I have at the bottom here is a log file viewer. So basically it's showing you simulation log file, but it understands UVM. So it does things like highlight appropriately and red for errors and things like that. In both these windows, you can also do extensive filtering because often the problem is, is you just have too much information. Okay, So basically you may want to narrow down the information being shown to you so you can actually find the actual problem quicker. Okay, Because that's what this is all about, finding the problem quicker. Okay? Okay, so all this environment is, can be used standalone, and it can synchronize together, and I can have multiples of these windows. So if I had USB and AXI or maybe PCI Express, I'd have multiples of these transaction windows in front of you. You can put them all side by side, and this whole environment can be synchronized together. So if I scroll through uh, or zoom, you know, it all syncs together like you'd expect. Okay? Often, though, you still need to get down to the signal level. 
So you can actually then within the peripheral analyzer choose to launch either DVE or Verdi. It will automatically populate your wave window with the appropriate signals. Okay, so if I've got my USB UTMI, the UTMI signals will be popped up in this wave window for you if you choose to do that. Now, when I synchronize the whole thing together, I can click on a transaction over here, and in the wave window you'd see start and end cursors show up, representing where that transaction started and ended. The whole thing will synchronize together like you'd expect, zooming, scrolling, all that kind of good stuff really works pretty well on it. And you now have an environment where you can go from the signal level all the way up to a higher level abstraction where it's easier to do debug at the protocol layer. Okay? In addition, as Neil said, sometimes you're trying to figure out those bugs and maybe it's an error message that popped up down here. I may choose to iconize this down because it does take up room if I have multiple of these windows and back annotate, let's say, just the errors into this transaction window. So now you see a little red line across there. Okay, that represents actually exactly when that error occurred, and now I see when that error occurred and what was happening on all the protocol layers, the transfers, transactions, etc. out there. If I hover over that line, okay, you actually get a little pop-up with the actual error message that was occurring at that particular time. Okay, so the whole thing here is really about trying to make debug much easier. It's trying to make it work at the right layer of abstraction. So if you're working with a protocol, you probably want to work at the protocol layer rather than at the signal layer or even at the message layer that like you might see down here. Okay, so it's a very effective means to debug both at the block and at the SOC. Maybe even more important at the SOC because you can have multiple protocols showing up here. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you want to find out more information about our VIP, go to synopsis.com slash VIP.